Saturday afternoon, Jess takes the bus downtown. She straightens her best pair of jeans. Em said to wear whatever she wants, but she can't help but worry that jeans are unprofessional. Still, they are a lot more comfortable than her dress slacks from freshman year. The Monroe building is fairly empty, and the robot at the front desk bobs at her in greeting and says, Hello, Jessica, in an even tone. Jess swipes her own keycard to access the special floor on the elevator, and it whirs to life, heading downstairs. Abby is already at the reception desk, typing away at something at the computer. Hey, she says with a disarming smile. It's blinding, that's what it is, and Jess doesn't assume that it's meant for her. Abby's just nice to everyone. Say hello. Say something. Anything. How's the weather? You look great. Your skirt is amazing. Why do you smell so good? Finally, Jess just nods and congratulates herself for not saying anything awkward. Em will join you in your office in a bit, em, Abby says. She stands up and brushes off imaginary dust. Are you... are you going to be doing more robotics work today? Jess asks. Yeah, and Em liked your idea about the casual attire. As long as you're comfortable, you know. You're still wearing a dress. Abby lifts an eyebrow, and a smile tickles the corner of her lips. I'm wearing a dress because I like it. I'll see you later. Jess mutters to herself and walks right into the wall. She winces and rubs her shoulder. Ugh, at least she was out of sight. She can't believe she said that. It sounded awful, as if she was judging Abby for her fashion choices. She cringes. You're still wearing a dress. There's nothing wrong with dresses. In fact, Abby looks great wearing them. Abby looks great in her volleyball uniform. Abby looks great in her workout clothes. Jess probably has no chance of interacting with her like a normal person, because she always is gorgeous, no matter what she wears. Jess slumps face first onto the desk until she gets motivated to pick herself up and read today's to-do list. The first item is to go up to the 14th floor and pick up parts for M. Jess pulls the instructions onto a DED chip and loads it into her own, then adds the three more orders of magnesium and aluminum alloys M mentioned she needed yesterday. The elevator is empty all the way up to the first floor, and then dings for the lobby. The door opens, but no one enters. Closed doors, Jess says. Wait, wait, hold the elevator! Jess sticks her arm out so the doors don't shut, and a breathless teenage boy dashes in. He's wearing what seems to be a flashy blue designer suit. It looks exactly like the one Wilton Lysander wears on the news. The boy grins at Jess and runs his hand through his blonde hair. There's a matching blue streak running down the left side. Hi, thanks so much, he says. He looks familiar somehow, but Jess doesn't think she's seen him at AHHS. Uh, no problem, Jess says. Are you an intern too? I've met- I haven't met any of the ones in the other departments. Yes, I'm an intern, he says. I'm Barry. Oddly formal, he holds out his hand for Jess to shake. Jess, she shakes his hand. It's going to be one of those things she can tell, like figuring out who is that one extra in that one movie. Sorry, you just look really familiar? Do you go to AHHS? Oh no, I live in Dav Devonport. I must have one of those faces, you know. Do you know what floor you're going to? Jess asks. They've already passed the 5th through 8th floors, where most of the research and development takes place. Jess was pretty sure all the other internships were there for that were for that area, but she could be wrong. Oh, uh, 14. They stand in silence for a bit, until the boy blurts out. So, how are you liking your job, Jess? It's great. I mean, I don't have any other internships to compare it to, but... I like the people I work with, and the projects are interesting. Barry keeps smiling and nodding as she talks. Jess goes on a bit of a tedium... Jess goes on about the tedium of filing, and finds his active interest in her pleasant. She's not one to make friends quickly, 
It reminds her of the first time Belle sat down with her at lunch and just started talking to her. How's things in research and development? I would have applied there, but I don't really know much about robotics. Barry shrugs. Oh, it's great. I love it. Lots of explosions. <laughs> just kidding. He leans in and lowers his voice, even though they're the only two in the elevator. Hey, have you seen anything weird around here lately? Weird? Like what? Jess folds her arms. Anything. You know. I heard that Master Mischief was seen a few times going in and out of this building. Maybe he's hiding out here. Barry lifts his eyebrows. I have no idea, Jess says, more fiercely than she intends. The mischief's lab is supposed to be a secret. That sounds like something the conspiracy theorists on the net would come up with. Barry leans back against the elevator wall. He opens his mouth, but the elevator door opens, and a few more employees join them. Two women are complaining to each other about project deadlines, but the conversation ends when they get in the elevator and they glare at the display. One man is flicking furiously at messages on his DED. He's wearing jeans and a polo shirt. All the employees look pretty casual, much to Jess's relief. It must be a Saturday thing. And now Barry looks overdressed. The other intern keeps eyeing her as if he wants to talk more about his mischief theories. The women get off at the 10th floor, and on the 11th, the man still on his DED walks right into a monrobot hovering at the elevator doors. It spins about in confusion, even, even as it's scanning him, and the man just walks right past. Bill Nathan, thermodynamic thermodynamic specialist, the Mun robot r mutters. Hey, watch it, Jess calls after the rude man, reaching out to steady the Mun robot. Thank you, it says in a steady monotone. It scans Jess's face, briefly, and makes an affirmative noise. Jessica Tran, experimental division intern. The Mun robot turns to Barry, scans him quickly, and then makes a series of panicked beeps. No employee or registered guest facial match. Intruder! Intruder! Lights flash from the Mon robot, and Jess flattens herself against the wall in a panic. Barry gives her a small salute. Later, Jess. Have a great day at work. He ducks out of reach of the Mon robot's emerging arms and shrugs out of his suit jacket. Barry tosses the jacket over the robot. The Mon robot spins about in confusion, chirping. Apprehend the intruder, over and over. People join the chase, and the Mon robot finally shakes off the jacket and flies after Barry. Jess sees the Mon robot chase him down the hallway and around the corner while startled employees leap aside. Hey, where'd he go? A woman calls out. The elevator door starts to close, and the 11th floor hallway is empty despite the noisy chaos around the corner. On the floor, Barry's jacket shimmers and disappears. Jess rides to the 14th floor. Barry hadn't seemed dangerous. Just another kid. What was he doing here? He was asking questions about Master Mischief? Maybe Barry was looking for Master Mischief? And what was up with that jacket? Maybe it was some advanced tech from a rival company. Barry was probably a spy, Jess decides. Too bad, he seemed nice. The 14th floor is filled with row after row of shelved tech working and not. A Mon robot takes the data chip from Jess's DED and hums to itself as it whirs about the shelves and fills a box. Jess thanks the robot and carries the ba box back down to the lab. No one joins her in the elevator this time. The ride is short and silent. She leaves the materials outside M's office. Strange noises are coming from behind the closed door, which is marked no entry without permission. She goes back to her office and works until noon. M joins her after about an hour, and they make and they make good progress, organizing all golf course related pranks into one folder. M excuses herself to lunch in private, and Jess goes to the small break room down the hall. 
She sits on a hard metal chair, pulls out the sandwich she brought and nibbles on it. A few moments later, Abby appears and pulls a box of Orion's favourite chicken pot pie from the freezer and heats it up in the microwave. Jess has seen those in the grocery store, but they're expensive, and her mother thinks they're a waste of money, putting real meat into frozen dinners. Abby grabs a chair and sits. So, do you take the bus here? Yeah. Jess puts down her sandwich and wipes the crumbs off her face. How long does it take? About an hour. The microwave beeps, and Abby pulls out the steaming pot pie. She jabs a fork into it, breaking the flaky pie crust. The scent of herbed broth and chicken fills the air, and Jess's plain peanut butter and jelly suddenly seems incredibly unappetizing. Here, have some. I can't finish this whole thing by myself. Abby pulls out another fork and hands it to Jess. She pushes the pie towards Jess and smiles. Thanks, Jess says, and takes a bite. The pie is salty but delicious, in that wonderfully guilty way of frozen dinners. The meat is savoury and tender and Jess doesn't think it's a waste at all. They share the pie as Jess tries to think of conversation. It's really difficult because Abby is sitting so close, eating with vigour, flakes of pie crust stuck to her lips. Finally, Abby breaks her silence. You know, since we're both coming from school on the weekdays, I could drive you. It's not a big deal. Really? That'd be great, Jess says. Are you sure? Don't you usually... Jess falters. Should she admit she knows Abby quit the volleyball team? Take your friends home? Not since I started working here. I'm not on the volleyball team anymore. And my friends have cars too. It's not like I was the only one who has a car. Oh. That's really nice of you. Thank you. They eat in silence, and then Jess surprises herself by asking when Abby got her driver's license, and they actually make small talk about the terrible bureaucracy that is the collective system for keeping track of the limited numbers of drivers in the country. Jess mentions the in incident in the elevator, and Abby just laughs. Yeah, probably a spy. We get a lot of those. Lots of patents and secrets here that our rivals would love to get a hold of. Surprised they got a teenager involved, though. That's new. Abby throws her whole head back when she laughs. The mirth travels through her entire body and she shakes with joy. I have no idea why I thought you were shy. Guess it takes you a while to warm to people, huh? Maybe, Jess says with a smile. Or maybe it takes her a while to get over the awkwardness of it interacting with someone she's liked for a long time. Either way... She's kind of proud of herself right now. 